in our second segment. We have Alex Guardiola, who's the Vice President of Government Affairs and Public Policy at the Worcester Regional Chamber of Commerce. Alex, welcome. Thank you again for having me. Well, uh, between Thanksgiving and, and, and the, the Christmas holiday, Hanukkah, yeah. Kwanzaa, season, Festivus, sure. um, we have, uh, it's uh, in between these holidays, you also, and, and one of the things we focus on at the Chamber is kind of the tax classification votes that take place in some of the municipalities yeah. in our chamber service region where they still have uh, dual tax rates, which right. is um, many communities uh, across the state have worked to eliminate. Um, and uh, so let's let's travel a little bit around <laughs> central Massachusetts. Sure. You had a recent uh, vote working with the Auburn Chamber leadership. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So as you mentioned, there's only three communities in central Massachusetts that still have a dual tax rate. So it's Worcester, Auburn, and Clinton. So Auburn two weeks ago had their tax classification. Again, they see that you know getting a fair and equitable tax rate will eventually lure new businesses, but immediately. Oh, when you say they, they're, 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 they're select the board. Yeah, select board, correct. elected board. Yep, yep. and retain their current businesses, you know. So they ha again have voted this year to narrow the tax gap between the residents and the businesses. They went down from a 1.15 differential to a 1.12. Again, very aggressive, making it very clear that they need to go to a single tax rate at some point. And their philosophical approach is that by doing so, you expand the commercial industrial tax base, yeah. uh, and 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 then you, you know you're kind of broadening the base, if you will, and creating jobs while you're at it. Absolutely. So the more businesses that you bring into the the uh, the town, yeah. the bigger the tax base, as you man mentioned, as or a pie, if you will, yeah. and that means it divvies up more of that pie by more people, essentially bringing taxes down for both businesses and residents. Right. And it's important to remember, you know, most of the businesses that we're talking about, whether it be in Auburn or Worcester, Clinton. You know, majority of the kind of the makeup of the business community, small businesses. Yeah, yeah. You know, about eighty-five percent of our chamber members are small businesses. Ten employees are under, right. uh, and that's a big. That's about across across the board throughout Central Mass. And I know you say this, you know, regularly, as you go out and talk to neighborhood business groups and people. But uh, you know, these these property tax issues apply with in many cases. Certainly, applies if a business owns the property. But in many cases, the leases that they have requires them to pay whatever the, the, in, the municipality's tax bill is. Yeah, so what typically happens is most uh, businesses have what's called a triple net lease if they do not own their business. That triple net lease uh, means that they have to pay the rents and utilities, as always, but also they have to pay the taxes, insurance, and maintenance of yeah. the property. So when you raise the taxes on the commercial property owner, it's really just rolling right on to, so to the renters. Business, right, yeah. so it's effectively... Uh, taking another hit at a gotcha. small business. And then Clinton, uh, just recently as well, most yeah. of them. Yeah, so Clinton this week also uh, had their tax classification vote. Uh, again, they made a five-year plan to, to get to a single rate. Um, you know, they held the line, which means that they voted to keep the same, not increase the differential between the residents and businesses, but they're going to keep it for this year for, and then go and circle back and say, what do we have to do? So to like Auburn, uh, you know, Clinton's trying to take just, you know, a, a slow, methodical yeah. approach, so you're not uh, hitting anybody too hard, but slowly kind of in doing it. Yeah, and that's the idea. You have to have it incrementally. You can't take a big shot on one way or the other. So uh, I think it's a smart plan, and hopefully that they'll get to that single rate. And there are two communities that already have done that in Central Mass, you, yeah. both with Webster and Fitchburg, that over a period of time then ultimately got to a single rate. Right. So Webster did it in 2018. They went to a 10-year plan, and in 2018 was the final vote to make it a single rate. Right. And then in 2019, Fitchburg did it. They did a 10-year plan, an aggressive 10-year plan. They actually knocked it out in seven years. Yeah, so. and then and then the, the Worcester had you know had its tax classification vote. And I thought what was most concerning from the assessor's report is in 1984, when, when the political leadership of the city at the time chose to go to a dual tax rate, the commercial industrial uh, tax rate, the, the commercial industrial percentage yeah. of the tax base was 34 percent, and the report that just came out today. Uh, came out uh, with, the package, uh, yeah. with the package from yeah. the city assessor and the city manager. Yeah. Now has the commercial industrial tax rate in Worcester at what? At 20%. So what that means essentially is that 35% of the taxes were paid by the commercial industrial taxpayers. At now, back in at 1984. 1984. Right. So now it's down to 20%, which means we're eroding our commercial industrial tax base. That's actually down from last year, which was 22%. Right. So it is, it's shrinking quickly. But people would say, you know, well, we see all this, these buildings going up and this is economic activity and, and, and the city's population has grown, but most of that is in residential. residential. Correct. So when you start seeing these big buildings being built around, you know, Polo Park, which is great. We need housing. We, we talk about this all the time. Yeah. But those, you know, those developments are residential, being taxed at a residential rate. So when you're taking out commercial bu bu uh, buildings, 
and putting them back in with residential buildings, again, we're going to continue to shrink our, our business yeah. base. Which is why we fight so hard on the, for the manufacturing, commercial, industrial base, our small businesses, because, you know, they, they, they're important in terms of providing jobs, but also in terms of having a diverse tax base. Absolutely. And the single biggest piece of any municipality's budget is, is their local tax base, and then comes the state aid and, and some federal aid as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. And, and, you know, obviously, you know, our, our workforce, it relies on these companies being here, but they also, they do other things that we don't talk about. They, they sponsor our sports, youth sports. They, you know, they donate to the nonprofits. They, they do a lot uh, of arts different and things. Culture, and culture, yeah, right. They're the ones who always get the knock on the door, contribute, can you donate? Absolutely, yeah. and uh, it happens all the time. So let's switch gears real quick. Yeah. Uh, in, a, in a couple of minutes we have left, uh, you know, the Chamber worked with the Health Foundation of Central Mass and others to really stand up this food hub. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's growing, uh, you know, encouraging small businesses formation, uh, creating, uh, on, you know, supporting entrepreneurs who want to create food-related business. It also works to support our farmers and linking them up with institutional buyers uh, and keeping locally sourced, locally grown food, which is healthy nutrition, good for our environment. Uh, we want to expand that food hub. And yeah. so we've been working and we're able to get some, some federal dollars, right? We did. So we actually were lucky enough to have uh, Congressman uh, McGovern and Senator Ed Markey to put an earmark in the appropriations bill uh, to be able to, to secure $3 million from the federal uh, federal level. And then uh, we mentioned it you know, earlier, but, you know, then the state stepped up and gave us 500. So uh, Lieutenant, Lieutenant Governor, Governor Polito, Polito right. who's really instrumental in helping us get. So that this allow us to use in the vacant space of Union Station. It's right. completely underutilized to bring in uh, six commercial kitchens, have storage yeah. space, have uh, vent space for these for these businesses as they grow. Yeah, and activate Union Station, right? right? Because that's the, that's the idea. We need to make that uh, a very uh, robust place. But it's going to be great for these entrepreneurs who really want to, you know, bring mom's recipe or grandma's, you know, recipe to fruition. And, and you can cook there because you need a commercial kitchen in, in order to be able to sell it uh, in, in stores or uh, on shelves, wherever it may and be. since its inception of the food, there's yeah. probably been a couple hundred people that have utilized that, gone through the training, yeah. got the appropriate certificates, um, gotten the, you know, training, uh, that uh, and permits that are needed permits, from state right. and, and municipal level yeah. to start businesses. Right, and that's the part of it that people don't realize. You have to get permitted. You have to get all the the serve safe, all these food, clean foods, all the. So there's all this process that they go through, and they get to make their product. So the food hub guides them with that through right. that process, gives them uh, access to commercial kitchens at a very affordable, low cost. Yeah. And we have seen some of these businesses become brick and mortar businesses in the area. Absolutely, and they're a good feeder to like the Worcester public market if they want to start there, and then they go into their brick and mortar or go right into brick and mortar. Again, it's and just We've got some of these vendors now at the 446 Main Street, the, right. the Synergy Building, the old Santan there. It's like a food court. Exactly, so right at the glass building downtown across from City Hall, we have uh, you know vendors there three to four a, a day, and you can try all these different foods. And I mean, when you talk about good ethnic food that you've probably never tried, uh, it, it's amazing what and they're there doing. Can be six or seven different venues in there on any given day. Yeah, absolutely. And, and there's stuff that you can buy that just, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, Minimum kettle corn or it's uh, uh, sauces or it's uh, cocoa vibes, uh, um, coconut so right. water. So it, it's really impressive. Yeah, yeah I had uh, I had a, a, a fusion, chicken fusion. There was Jamaican, Korean fusion food. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, it's, it's really any any all types. Yeah, I like spicy food. So I went with the, the, the dissemination sandwiches, which are really hot. Yeah. I, you got to be careful, but they're delicious. Gotcha. Uh, and uh, just uh, stay on some, some of the state, uh, the federal and state partnerships. We also work uh, in the minute we have left with the state legislative delegation on bringing some dollars back to Worcester both for the Food Hub and the Worcester Green Corps. Right, so there's a couple programs that we, you know, we also kind of help along and one of them is Worcester Green Corps, try to beautify the city. Partnership between the city, uh, United Way to help engage young people, the community on cleanups, beautifications, but also education and career paths. Correct. In, so in green collar. Gr green collar uh, jobs, correct. So I mean, that's the future. So, but uh, we were lucky enough to have Representative LaBeouf uh, earmark us $100,000 there. And on the food hub side, uh, Representative Dan Donahue got 200000 to be able to move that project along. And so, Mike Moore has been a big And Mike big Moore has been on the center side, too. has been a, on both sides. So yeah, both. yeah. And those that'll help, you know, these programs continue to continue to grow and expand uh, their, their reach. And uh, we appreciate them doing that. No, very appreciative. I think they've been, you know, we're lucky to have a great delegation in central Massachusetts. Good. Well, Alex, we'll have you back soon. Give us an update on our, our work at the local, state, and federal level. And we're going to come right back for our final segment. These days, you've got your hands full in life. That's why we help you bank simply and securely with tools like Face ID and Touch ID. 
It's why we make it easy to make purchases on the go and get cash back while you're at it. Why we help you quickly deposit checks wherever you are. And it's why we lend a hand with sending and receiving money right from your phone. So even when you're on the move, you can manage your finances. Bank Hometown. Unlock your potential.